The Orlando Magic makes some changes to their front office. One big name moving on to senior advisory role land and some other changes around the Magic. We'll take this moment to look at what the Magic have done and whether the Magic are doing the right things under Jeff Waltman. We'll get to it today on Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed locked on magic. Today is July 6th, 2023. My name is Philip Ross. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Of course, follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic restructure their front office. We'll go over some of those changes, what they mean, what they may not mean, and 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 why they're maybe a little more cosmetic than we think. We'll get to all that. Plus, kind of take another global look at Jeff Weltman and whether he has the magic moving at the right pace. I'll go over some of the criti- common criticisms of his tenure. Some I agree with, some I don't. Um, and whether the magic are doing things at the rate that they should be. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. First, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. We got the news uh, Wednesday morning that the Orlando Magic are restructuring their front office. Um, it's it's a, few, a promote. It is a few promotions. It is one senior member moving to special advisor world. Um, it's a lot of title changes, um, and and there surely are some others that weren't worth announcing in a press release because so much of what front office executives do doesn't always register with the public. And 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 even like I have an idea of what everyone does on the team, but there are different different pieces of this puzzle. So let's get through the news first. Let's get through the news and, and what the Magic did on Wednesday. The Orlando Magic are run by, obviously, President Basketball of Operations, Jeff Weltman. But ever since he came over, he brought with him former Milwaukee Bucks general manager, John Hammond. Between the two of them, they've been in the league for more than 30 years. Hammond was, you know, a a quasi-mentor. He's someone that's been in the lead chair. He drafted Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, While Jeff Weltman had more than 20 years in the NBA before he took the Magic job, this was his first job in that lead chair. And so having Hammond by his side, Magic fans refer to the Magic front office as Welt Ham, having Hammond by his side certainly influenced some of his philosophy and some of his drafting philosophy. We we we, we all love the length jokes and the and the and the wingspan jokes. Um, but Hammond was Hammond essentially was the right hand man for Jeff Weltman. But now it's Jeff Weltman alone, or not alone, but he does not have that right-hand man with him every day. The Magic announced that John Hammond is moving on to special advi- to a special advisor, to a special advisory role. And this is essentially retirement with one foot still in the pool. Um, it, it, it means that Hammond is not going to be there for the day-to-day, but will be there when Weltman needs him. Um, John Gabriel, former Magic general manager, is also in a special advisory role. He shows up at some practices. He shows up especially around draft time. He's just there to give advice. He's just there to kind of give different perspective, to give kind of that global perspective, as well as share his experience. Um, and look, it's it's a nice thing to, to be able to go to your Rolodex and have two former, I, I, I know John Gabriel won executive of the year. I'm pretty sure John Hammond won one at 1.2. Um, it's good to have those guys in your corner and guys that, you know, are still exclusive to the magic. Um, I don't imagine that, the relationship here changes very much. You know, John Hammond is still a very experienced executive in this league. He's still someone that Jeff Weltman can rely on for guidance, for advice, for just bounce ideas off of. Um, the only difference is that he's probably not going to be in the office every day um, like he was before. To make do, to, to kind of replace that, the Orlando Magic have named Anthony Parker 
as the team's general manager. Anthony Parker was, has actually been with the Magic organization before Jeff Waltman arrived. He was a scout with the team. He's a longtime NBA player, including with the Orlando Magic back in 2000, as well as a Euro League MVP on the court. He's been behind the scenes with the Magic for a very, very long time. Started off as a scout. When Jeff Weltman arrived, they promoted him to or moved him to the Lakeland Magic. He was the general manager of the Lakeland Magic. In the four years that he was general manager with the Lakeland Magic from 2017 to 2021, the Lakeland Magic tied for the most regular season victories in the G League, including winning the G League championship in the bubble in 2021. After that 2021 season, Parker was moved to the Orlando Magic proper uh, as an assistant GM. Now he is the full general manager, sort of the second in command, if you will, of the Orlando Magic's front office. Um, the, uh, I don't know exactly how they delineate those roles and and what role they play, but I do kind of think of the Magic as sort of the uh, like a newspaper where Jeff Weltman is the editor-in-chief. He's kind of in charge of the whole thing and making sure that the big picture stuff is working to represent the paper to the outside. And Anthony and the general manager kind of works as the managing editor. He make the managing editor makes sure all the day to day stuff works well. Now I'm not I don't know if that's exactly how the magic organized things here, but that's kind of the vibe I get and 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 the way that the PBO the president of basketball operations uh, and and the general manager kind of work together. Um, you know the, the president of basketball operations is looking at everything, including the business side. General manager is managing scouts, managing players, managing coaches. They all work together, obviously. You know, you see Jeff Weltman and Jamal Mosley. You'll see them together in Vegas, I'm sure. Uh, you'll see all three of them together in Vegas. They'll all be there. Um, so, you know, it, you know, you need a group of people to draw information from, to draw advice from, to draw just perspective from. And Anthony Parker, certainly as a player in the league for a long time, as a player overseas, um, as a scout, is someone that is certainly really valuable to have around. And Parker has risen through the ranks and, and has been someone that has been kind of homegrown here in Orlando as an executive. And so I think that is certainly a good thing for the Orlando Magic overall. And again, I, I'm loath to say what each individual person does and whether they do their job well, because at the end of the day, the buck stops with Jeff Weltman. And Weltman is the one making all the decisions. He's always been the one making all the decisions since he arrived in Orlando. Uh, and so... Ultimately, the responsibility falls on him. We'll get to that in just a moment. The other move the Magic made, the Orlando Magic have promoted or changed a title um, for Pete D'Alessandro to Executive Vice President of Basketball Operations. So I do know what Pete's role is. And, and, and you know, I, Jeff Wilman even hinted at this in, in the press release statement. Um, Pete D'Alessandro is the Magic's cap, uh, capologist. Um, he is the one in charge uh, making sure the magic fit under the cap. He, I, I know that he represents, he also represents the team to the league on some matters as well. He's the one that's going to be really important as the new salary cap comes into play now. Um, and, and it's probably helped with a lot of the structuring of these contracts. Again, at the end of the day, it's Jeff Weltman's decision that that's getting all this done. Um, so I don't want to give credit where it's not due, but, um, Del Delisandro is the guy that's kind of, that kind of just makes sure everything is, okay with the cap and, and is kind of the Magic's cap expert. Those guys are really, really valuable and going to be especially valuable as the Magic continue to evolve and grow. Again, I, I think what's really important is while this is this is news, like it's news, John Hammond stepping down or stepping away uh, from maybe some of the day-to-day -day activities of the team, that is a big change. Um, and, you know, Jeff Waltman, I don't want to say he's had training wheels because he – was a pretty good bicyclist before he came to Orlando. Like he's been part of some some front. He's been part of front offices all around the league. He's had every single role. The only role he didn't have was as the main decision maker. He's been the main decision maker now for six years, but he's had John Hammond with him the entire time. Now it really feels like just like this team has really got Jeff Weltman and his staff's imprint on it. You know, since they kind of washed away um, the remnants of the old version of this team. Now Jeff Weltman, because now there's no Rob Hennigan players left on the Magic. Now Jeff Weltman has kind of got the imprint, got his imprint, and is kind of coming into his own as an executive. Um, again, like he's plenty capable. Like this wasn't a, this isn't a surprise. How he's done isn't necessarily a surprise. The patience that he's shown, that part may be a surprise, but the fact that he could do this job and at least do it adequately 
um, is not a surprise. Like he, he had all the experience in the world to, to fill this job and he has done it well. But now there's a bit of a staff change. Um, now, you know, while Parker and, and Delisandro and, and everyone else has been in the room with him, and it's not like Hammond's going to be gone, but some of that day-to-day stuff is going to change a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how that happens. And if it goes right, we won't notice anything different. Honestly, we probably won't notice anything different. I want to repeat, this is news because it is news. Things happen, things change in the managers front office, but it's not necessarily going to change the output of what we see. Because again, all these guys are internal. All these guys have been part of the decision-making process and the decision-maker is ultimately still the same. And even the guy who's leaving, even the guy who's departing is still going to be around to help out when needed. But this does feel like a good point, especially now that we're, you know, July 6th, the end of the moratorium is coming. We're going to get these signings to be official. We're going to ask kind of the big, bigger question, whether Jeff Weltman has the magic moving at the right pace, whether the magic actually accomplished what they needed to accomplish this summer. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, it's time for a quick word from our friends over at BetterHelp. Today's podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all have moments in our lives when we feel uncertain, when we're not sure what the right step is, how to deal with our emotions, or just how to react to the situation in front of us. We're sometimes faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. So whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I personally benefited from therapy throughout my life. I was not very good at handling change early in my life. Therapy helped me confront change, not attack change, that's not the right word, but attack change positively, except that change is a part of life. And, you know, like what's going on in the Magic's front office to some extent, um, that change is a part of life and to find benefits from it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. So we are coming up on the end of the moratorium here. Um, You know, the Joe Ingles signing, the Mo Wagner signing. We can only talk about that in theoretics. It is only theoretical. It's only reported signings right now. Um, But reportedly at noon on Thursday, so maybe by the time you're listening to this, those signings can become official. Um, The Magic have already shipped out to Vegas, so how they'll get those contracts signed is going to be the next big question. But... um, Signings will start becoming official. Some of these trades that have happened will start becoming official on Thursday. Um, And so it feels like, assuming everything goes as reported, which maybe we shouldn't assume with the Orlando Magic, but assuming everything goes according to plan, how did the Magic do this summer? Really, let's, let's think about it. How did the Magic do this summer? They added, obviously, Anthony Black and Jet Howard in the draft. And look, I'm a big believer that the draft, you just add the best players available. You figure out the fit later. Or you figure out, you know, as long as there's that path for them to play, you figure it out. Um, And and so on that front, I do have to, you know, I do think the Magic did well talent-wise. Anthony Black is a very talented guard. I really like him as a guard prospect. Um, he has all the things that check the Magic's boxes with his size, with his ball handling ability, with his basketball IQ, his defense, his defensive ability. He checks a lot of boxes. And so I, I, I do think that's ultimately going to be a solid pick for Orlando. The bigger question was picking Jet Howard. While he does fill that shooting need, there are a lot of questions about his defense, uh, you know, about his other intangibles around his shooting. But if he's got, again, he fits the, the profile because he's got the size He can move a little bit with the ball in his hands. There's a lot to like about Jed Howard. So the Magic Magic draft raised a lot of questions. And it wasn't necessarily for 
you know, certainly people question taking Jet Howard, and, and we'll see what, you know, again, I always say the their draft board, if he's the top guy on their board, take him. It, it, I don't care that they overdrafted a guy. Um, if he's their guy, take him. And again, we'll see what the results are. Um, we'll see if there was a road not taken that the Magic should have taken. Um, that's what, that, you know, this is all just guessing at the end of the day. And Jed Howard's as good a guess as anyone else. Um, the drafting of two guards, though, did raise some serious questions. Um, questions about how this rotation is going to work. How do you get Anthony Black and Jet Howard on the floor? And those questions are not easy to answer um, because there isn't a clear path for these two players to play, assuming Orlando keeps the whole rotation as it is. Um, not that the Magic needed to focus on needs in the draft. I said this throughout the draft process. Taylor Hendricks was probably the cleanest fit for the Magic, but if Anthony Black's the best player, you take him. He can play a little bit of three. The Magic seem to be open to playing him at the three a little bit because he has that size then, you know, maybe that's the direction they go. But that, I think, put a lot of emphasis on free agency. That put a lot of focus on free agency to fill those needs. And, and frankly, as much as I like the Joe Ingle signing, I do think that the Magic have left themselves a little bit exposed on the back end. And, and I, I do have to question what this Magic front office was able to accomplish here uh, in free agency, at least in this uh, effect. The Magic are going to rely on Jonathan Isaac to play. Um, you know, again, they have more information on it than we do. He might be fully healthy. He might be back in the gym. He might be jo 2019 Jonathan Isaac again, or tw early 2020, or, you know, tw let's go 2019 calendar year Jonathan Isaac. They might be seeing that in his workouts and saying, he's ready. We have faith. And if, and if, again, Jonathan Isaac goes out there and plays 80 games. So be it. Magic or set it powerful. They don't have to worry about it. I don't know about you. I'm not willing to roll that dice um, after three years, but they have more information than we do. So we'll see. But I do think the Magic are a little exposed there. And I think that Magic did miss an opportunity, perhaps, to upgrade that backup center spot. Um, you know, again, I know I beat this drum a ton, but Wendell Carter is not going to. Wendell Carter's never played 65 games in a season. Um, so I do think the Magic had to plan a little bit for these injuries. They could not rely solely on these play on these players being healthy long enough to make the kind of push that they're looking to make. Having said that, I do think that bringing back Goga Batadze and, and Wendell and Mo Wagner potentially could fill that need. Um, you know, I, I will not give the Magic a full failing grade on that because they trust Mo Wagner, obviously. Um, he gives them some offensive push. And Goga Batante had a really strong finish in the season. It wasn't enough maybe for me to believe wholly in it, and I would have looked for some uh, looked for an upgrade, and, and there were a few options that I thought were decent upgrades that, that they didn't pursue or, or you know weren't ever really in the running for or you know, didn't like, but they stuck with what they know. And that could play out well. Now, the Joe Ingles signing, I really like Joe Ingles as a player. I really like Joe Ingles as a player for this team. He's going to give them some outside shooting. He's going to give them some playmaking. He's going to give them a veteran to help these young guys get better every day. I really, and, and he's, you talk, you go to, go, go listen to old episodes of Locked On Jazz. They love Joe Ingles in Salt Lake City. I'm sure they love Joe Ingles in Milwaukee. You know, Salt Lake, the Jazz were really heartbroken to let him go. And, and his ACL injury um, back in the 2021 season derailed that Utah season, like completely derailed it. That he was playing really, really well. He was a great facilitator off their bench. It it ended, it, it didn't end their season, but it, it really hurt their season. And, and, if Engel, and again, ACL injuries usually take a full year of playing to fully recover from. It's a year of, of rehab, it's a full year playing to get better. Yes, singles is 35, but we're in that full year period. He could be, if he can even sniff a little bit of what he was in 2021, the Magic have a really, really good player. And so I really like the add of a veteran, and I think Ingles can play a little bit of small ball four. But again, I think that the Magic, the Magic really love continuity. And, and at the end of the day, you look at this roster, 
the guys that they cut, Michael Carter Williams and Admiral Schofield, Admiral Schofield and Bull Bull. Bull Bull's the only questionable one. But they added two rookies who are going to help this team and, and could crack the rotation. And they added Joe Ingles. At the end of the day, I look at this offseason, and while I still have questions about what the Magic did and, and, and what holes the Magic left open, and, and, and ultimately, like I think their goal is to be a factor in the postseason race and, and to improve. Improving means that they'll they'll start winning more games. Um, I do think that the Magic left themselves a little bit exposed, but I do think the Magic did get better. And so that is like the catch-22 the Magic are in. And I think that leads us to one of the bigger questions that the Magic have from this offseason. Is are the Magic moving at the right speed? Are the Magic taking full advantage of every opportunity in front of them? And I think that's a real question that we need to ask because, like I said yesterday, the clock is ticking. We're going to dive into that a little bit coming up in just a moment. Before we move into uh, the, our final segment, though, I want to remind you all to join our subtext community. Check check it out at joinsubtext.com slash locked on magic. It's like having my cell phone number in your phone book. You join sub if when you join subtext, you get a text from me. You can respond back. I will respond back to you. I'll send out messages as well, including game observations and plenty more. Now is the time to join Subtext before Summer League. Get all my Summer League thoughts, players to watch, players that impressed me, and so much more. Check it out at joinsubtext.com slash LockedOnMagic. So, this, this uh, offseason was not the make or break offseason. But after last season's Mini breakthrough. I won't call it a full breakthrough, but after last season's mini breakthrough, it did feel like there was an opportunity to really hit the accelerator, to really kind of speed things up. And obviously, this is a fan base and this is a franchise that has spent the last decade not even fighting for scraps, fighting for after scraps. This is a franchise that is, this is a franchise and a fan base that are hungry for success. And so I see this criticism often of Jeff Weltman, and, and it's it's born in something true, in that Weltman doesn't really do anything in his off seasons. And to this point, I say, yes, that is correct. The Magic, as an organization, have valued continuity. For a young team, they want stability. They want the same coach. They want the same players. They want everyone to be able to grow and progress together. And they kind of nibble on the margins to add players to their team. You know, they they you know, even before the 2021 trades, the 2021 trades are the you know kind of flipped everything on its head, but it was like turning an hourglass. The sand was running out on Vucevic, on Nikola Vucevic, Aaron Gordon, and Evan Fournier. They flipped it over and suddenly. All that time is reset, has reset itself. And the Magic see plenty of grains of sand left in that hourglass to kind of let things play out. And that's the approach that Jeff Weltman has kind of taken, is continuity is going to help the team grow. At some point, though, and I think we all see it coming, at some point, though, the group you have is not good enough. At some point, you're going to have to push some chips in the middle. You're going to have to take a risk. And I think it's a fair debate and a fair argument to ask, was this the offseason to do it? Now, I don't think this was the offseason to add a superstar player. Um, you know, Fred Van Vliet was bandied about. The Magic weren't getting $40 million a cap room. That would have cost them too much to get there. Um, so that idea was, I think, Fairly quickly discarded once the market really began to set itself. Um, Van Vliet, while I think would have really helped this team and done well, done good things, I don't think he was the guy the Magic are chasing. At the end of the day, like I've said a million times already, next season is about really figuring out how good Paolo can be. 
And I think, that, and Franz and, and a lot of other players. And I think the Magic especially didn't want to spend this summer halting the growth that Paolo showed last year, halting the growth that Franz showed last year. They didn't want to bring in a player that was going to take the ball out of their hands or, or a star player that was going to demand the ball and take it out of their hands. They want to give Paolo the chance to do what he did last year, but better. They want to give Franz the chance to do what he did last year to take the growth from rookie to sophomore year, from sophomore to third year. And so already this philosophy is keeping Orlando from making that big all-in move. Now, if there were rumors that the Magic were trying to move up in the draft, and, and I've heard I heard those those whispers too, and nothing ever materialized. So it's not like the Magic weren't trying to be aggressive. But Orlando still really values flexibility. The ability to do anything. The ability to go from gear one to gear two really quickly. And that's that's part of why the Magic are moving so slowly. Or why it doesn't feel like the Magic are moving quickly. Yes. The Magic need to win this year. Like, like I, I, I know I talk a little bit out of both sides of my mouth here. This season's about development. This season's about seeing Paolo take that next step, about Franz take that next step, figuring out whether Wendell Carter can be a playoff center, whether Marco Fultz can be a playoff center, figure out if Cole Anthony is a player that they should invest in. This season is about figuring out what works and what doesn't in a playoff setting. This season is about making the postseason so that the Magic can actually figure out what they need to do and how aggressively they need to go after it. Because if the Magic get to the sixth seed, all of a sudden, this team is ready. And the Magic can be more aggressive, can be a destination where they can convince some of these stars. You know, Damian Lillard ain't considering Orlando quite yet. They got to prove themselves first. And that's what this season's about. And so Orlando, very, very smartly, in my opinion, has kept, has improved their roster, like I just said but kept themselves in a position where they can do anything, where they can be in position to make the big trade for the next disgruntled star. They have all the assets. They have all the players. They have all the talent. They have some of the depth now, too, to go make that play. But they're waiting. They're biding their time for it because the team isn't quite ready. They need to be ready sooner than later, though, as I mentioned yesterday. And so at some point, Weltman's going to have to take those risks. I would argue that, yes, Weltman should have taken some of those risks after the 2019 playoffs. Um, after that 2019 playoff run, they should have pushed them. They should have, they should have tried and pressed their luck a little bit, perhaps. You know, getting Paolo Van Carroll and, and, and the, move, the trade that they made for Nikola Vucevic, Kind of made things all, all right. But 2019 certainly felt like a moment. It was like, okay, we are right on the cusp of something. Let's go for it. And the Magic did. And they floundered a bit in 2020. They didn't go for it again in 2020. And predictably, the Magic fell off the map. Or fell out of the playoff picture for whatever brief moment they were in it. The Magic aren't letting that happen again. But soon they're going to have to make some moves. For now, they might be going the right speed, but that engine better be ready to hum in a year. Because this team, hopefully, does its part on the court to open up some avenues to use all that well-earned flexibility. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Search your tune in Himway, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the focus on the podcast to your podcast enabled listen device for latest on the Orlando magic. Be sure to check out Orlando magic daily.com. You can follow us there, uh, there on Twitter at O magic daily on Orlando magic daily.com right now, a big article on Caleb Houston, why it's important for him to have a great summer league. And on that note for my everyday listeners, tune in tomorrow. We'll go over the big stories and big things we're watching at summer league over the next couple weeks in Las Vegas. The magic's first summer league game is Saturday um, against the Detroit Pistons. Should be a fun one um, going up against Asar Thompson. 
But that's going to do it for me today. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Philip Rossman Mike. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.